All right. So we've got electric potential being the electrical potential energy per charge that's present near other charges. <clears throat> so when we talk about having a charge here, and we talk about, well, you know, the reason we talk about having a test charge, and we mentioned before that a test charge is generally considered to be much, much smaller than the charge, well, we can just call it uh, charge that's making the field, but we could call it, that's not a good subtitle, but it's the, the charge that's, that's causing the field to occur, or the set of charges that's causing the field to occur. The test charge is much, much smaller. The reason we choose the test charge to be much, much smaller in the way we're thinking about this is that this test charge we're supposing doesn't influence the electric field very much. The dominating charge is this charge that's so-called the origin of the electric field, okay? It's you know, causing the, the uh, electric potential. So if I have this guy be my, my charge of origin, I could say that at this position, I would have a certain electric potential. Why am I recording? Oh, yeah, I am. And we could say that that's electric potential at position one. The, the dot that you're yeah, the dot. You know what? I'll put it in red. Okay. And if I get out to this position, I could say that that has an electric position, uh, potential, let's say at position two. I could even do it again. I could say, oh, at this position, I have an electric potential at position three. Now, if I were to put a charge there, then I could figure out what the electric potential energy is. But at this point, I just have the electric potential. It's the potential for energy to be there if a charge was there. Okay. What if I chose this point here to find my electric potential? What do you think might be true? Same as what? <coughs> yeah. Could it be the same as any other charge in the same, the same radius? Yeah, so V1. Same as V1. And if I did the same thing over here, it would be the same as V1. And if I did the same thing here, same as V1. And the same thing here, and the same thing here, and the same thing, look at this. Anything that has the same radius would have the same electric potential. Okay, And we might call this something like an equipotential contour. We could call it an equipotential contour. But guess what? Is this in two dimensions? Do charges just sit in two dimensions? So is a, a contour is usually for 2D. Do you think we could do equipotential surface? Well, you could do sphere. Maybe it's not spherical, though, right? This one, this one happens to maybe be a sphere because it's just a sing, simple charge. But let's call it an equipotential surface. In this case, it's a sphere. And so you, could, you would have an equipotential surface out here. You would have an equipotential surface out here. And all these guys would have equipotential surfaces if you followed along the contour. And it actually kind of starts to look like, you know, in geography class, the elevation drawings. And you would say that along any line in a geography class, if you were to walk the line on one of those overhead maps, wouldn't you always have the same gravitational potential energy? If you walk the line around here, you always have both the same electric potential and the same electric potential energy. So here's the question. If I move a charge from this point here, and I'll, I'll do it in black. If I move a charge from this point here to this point here, does it take any work? No. Same electric potential, same electric potential energy. If I move a charge from, I'll do an orange x. If I move a charge from this x here to this x here, is work involved? Yes. Anytime you stand on an equipotential surface, on the same equipotential surface, or contour, however you want to think of it, you're not going to do any work. As soon as you start moving to new contours or new surfaces, you're starting to do some work. Okay.